What's up guys and welcome back to Moan Inc. If you guys are new here then what is up? My name is Erica. Hey, how you doing? And if you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, maybe you're just into the mythology and maybe, maybe you are just one of the people in my DMs asking me about a very specific lady who we're going to be talking about today. Well then, if that sounds like you and even if that doesn't, you guys are going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you know every single time I post in the future. But on to the topic of today's video and as you can see from the title, we're going to be discussing Hypsipyle. I would like to open this video by saying I don't actually know if it's pronounced Hypsipyle. I have just been pronouncing Hypsipyle my entire life, so I'm not really going to change at any point unless a Greek person yells at me in the comments. I will always change if a Greek person is like, you are absolutely butchering this name and we need to address this. Please school me in the comments below. However, it is spelt like this and I don't know how else you could possibly pronounce that aside from Hypsipyle. But anyways. Now the only reason why I'm actually discussing Hypsipyle is not because I have ever thought that she was important enough to discuss, which now that I've gotten into her story again, I'm a bit like, well, why wasn't I ever considering Hypsipyle? But the reason why I'm actually discussing her is because I did one of those stories with like the question box in it and asked you guys uh, what women you wanted me to discuss on the channel. And I got four replies for Hypsipyle. Four. That is four more than I thought I was going to get. And I was like, oh, okay. And then after I put it up on my story asking if you guys do want Hypsipyle or if it just happened to be those four people, in which case I would have just, you know, replied to them in a DM, a bunch of people were messaging me about Hypsipyle and asking me about where she pops up, you know, what we know about her, all of that sort of stuff. So I was like, wow. Okay, I'll do Hypsipyle then. Like, no problem. You guys chose her. So, Hypsipyle is a mythological woman. She's not a real woman. She's mythological. She's written about in these two books. So, the back one, you guys can't see. But the back one is Apollonius of Rose, and that's Jason and the Golden Fleece. And then we get her again in Ovid's um, Heroides, this second book here, which I don't know why I put my plant there because you guys can't. Let me move it, actually. So you guys can see the. T there we go. Oh, now it doesn't look very pretty. Let's try rear. Re Does that work? That kind of works now. Okay, whatever. Well, now you guys can see the title. Okay, so it's in these two books. And also, we actually have a lost play of Hypsipyle, which is under that name as well, and it's by Euripides. But again, it's lost, so we don't have the actual text. We don't have any of the information from that play. And the reason why we know that the play exists, as I always say whenever I say we have fragments of something, is because other people quoted it. So we know that at one point or the other, people had actually gone to see Hypsipyle, people had actually engaged with this myth, that people knew this myth because they were quoting it in their works, so we know it existed, but again, we don't have anything of that play, which is frustrating, but now you know it existed. So Hypsipyle herself is from the island of Lemnos. Now Lemnos is here on a map. Once again, I love to give you guys some context. So this is where she lives in mythology. Now the story goes, when you read in Apollonius of Rhodes, the story goes that the women on this island constantly forgot to honor Aphrodite, which if you guys know anything about mythology, if you forget to honor a goddess, you can best bear their coming back with a vengeance, okay? They are not about that life in any myth people get punished for forgetting a goddess. So obviously Aphrodite, not thrilled by this. In fact, she's so mad that she decides to curse the women by making their husbands fall, well, not fall in love, but have this like raging lust for all of these slave girls that they had previously taken when they had raided Thrace, right? You don't need to know where Thrace is, but they went to go raid Thrace. They came back with all these slave women because that's what you do when you raid places in the ancient world. And so now Aphrodite made them all have this like incredible lust for these Thracian ladies. And so all of their husbands slept with these Thracian ladies. And obviously the women from Lemnos, their wives were like, what the f and so part of the curse was that they then ended up killing all of their husbands and they ended up killing the entire rest of the male population on this island in order to make sure that, that never happened again. Yes, this is a real myth where the ladies decided to kill all of the men. And it's one of those that is glossed over so much. And you're just like, why? Isn't this a wonderful myth to tell for like female empowerment? They literally ended up being on an island of only women. How interesting, especially because murder's involved in it. But either way, that is the story that Apollonius tells us. Now, the only male who was actually spared during this whole massacre of the men was the king, and his name is Thoas, and that's because his daughter, who's Hypsipyle, she spares him. And so she, according to Apollonius, like puts him in this chest and then sends the chest out to sea, and he then ends up washing up on this island like safe and sound, right? So that's important because it shows that she has like a little bit, she's not entirely under the curse. She has this little bit of love still for men that she manages to save her own father. The only man to survive, which 
which is <laughs> crazy. So Hypsipyle takes over as queen in place of her dad. Now, after this whole massacre though, the issue is that the women are terrified that the Thracians are gonna find out that they had just murdered all of their women. So they are terrified of anyone coming to the island. They're terrified of anyone finding out. They're terrified of rumor. Like the women are just, you know what? We're just gonna stay here. We're just gonna do our thing. And we're just gonna exist on the island. No one's allowed to leave. <laughs> no one's allowed to come onto the island. That's it. Which is quite funny when you think about it because they just massacred an entire male population and they're terrified that other men are gonna come and like, kill them but you read it and you're just like you could definitely take them though like you just killed all these men in their homes like do you think a foreigner could have a real chance against you i don't think so but either way again that's a myth so bearing this in mind bearing this fear that they've instilled in themselves for no apparent reason that one day when they see a ship approaching the island they all start panicking as f and they all go to Hypsipyle and they're like, what the hell are we supposed to do? The ship is coming right towards us. And they obviously think that it's Thracians who have heard the whole thing about the, the massacre and all of this. So they're panicking, right? And when the men dock onto the island, that they actually end up sending a son of Hermes initially to go and speak to the women, to go and speak to Hypsipyle. And after a while, Hypsipyle does decide that she's going to allow the men to come onto the island and to come into the city and possibly into the palace. That she's like, you know what? If their intentions are good and they just want nothing but peace and they want like a rest stop, then that should be fine. Which obviously all the other women when she calls a meeting, they're all like, are you insane they might be thracians one they two might just want to kill us three they might hear the rumor and then they might go back and they might tell the thracians and then the thracians might come and kill us like what are you doing but hypsipyle does not really care right this is why it's important to know that she saved her father because she still has this little soft spot for men so she sends the messenger back and then after this whole meeting she ends up sending one of the women also to go and directly tell the men that they should come into the city itself and into the walls which like before this was like an absolute no-no so the fact that she's doing this is like a big deal and especially a big deal to all the the women but the men hear this message and the men are just like great and so the leader of the men he decides to put on this like really beautiful robe that was given to him by athena when the ship was being made and it's like covered in all of this beautiful like images on the back of it and he's also holding this spear that atalanta the warrior the female warrior atalanta gave to him and this leader of the boat the boat is called the argo if you don't know where i'm going with this the leader of the boat is Jason. So you will now know where this story is going and it's not going to end well. So Jason walks his little booty all the way to the palace, right? This is pre Medea days. This is on his way to the whole Golden Fleece thing. And so he walks up to the palace. He's looking his best. And Hypsipyle is described as literally seeing him and blushing. And you're just like, oh, no. It's so painful that she's like this powerful queen of like all of these women who again, and I want to stress, massacred all the men on the island. And yet she sees Jason and she blushes. And I'm like, don't. Do it! Now, initially, Hypsipyle does a really smart thing where she offers the story of what happened to all the men on the island to Jason and his men. And what she tells him, obviously she misses out the whole massacre thing because that would like not go down well. But she basically just tells them that all of the men ended up falling in love with these women in Thrace. And so that's where they all went back to go and live. And now they all exist in Thrace. And the men just assume that her father died of old age. She doesn't offer that information to them. They just assume it, which I guess she's not lying considering she just didn't mention it, but she's now the queen and they don't really argue with that. Now, Hypsipyle falls so madly in love with Jason that it's, it's painful guys she falls so madly in love with him that she literally offers him the kingship of the island like she just offers it to him on a silver platter and she's like by the way if you want to stay you totally can and you can be king of the island and you can rule over all of us that would be amazing but obviously because jason has to go and do his whole you know golden fleece thing and pick up you know like the skin of a ram and all this that he does decline and he's just like i have better things to do than rule this teeny tiny island so like no but the men all love that they've been welcomed into the palace they love that they've been welcomed onto the island because they're all just you know hooking up with all of the women these are all these women without any men. The men see their opportunity and they're just like, great, let's go. And so they're all just hooking up with all the women. Jason is obviously like, he beelined it for the palace that he could just hook up with his Hypsipyle even. How did I? The episode is about her and I just <laughs> tripped over her name. That is shameful. Now, as this is all going on inside the walls of the city, we then have Heracles who has decided to stay by the boat. So Heracles was on this whole little expedition with Jason. Heracles or Hercules is his Roman name. I don't know which one you guys are more familiar with. We're using Heracles because this is a Greek tale. So Heracles decides to stay by the boats though as the men go and do their funny business with all the ladies who are without men on the island because they obviously see their opportunity. They are horny men. So what else are they going to do? It's mythology. I mean like come on. Heracles though is silently judging them. Not actually silently. He is actually quite verbally judging all of them from the boats and he's basically calling all of them children. There are a couple of other men who remain with him by the boats and he basically calls all of them children and he says that they're all being 
fucking ridiculous and they have to go on this stupid quest anyways. Why are they extending the journey if they're all just gonna be hooking up with ladies? Like, this isn't actually beneficial to getting the fucking golden fleece. So Heracles basically goes in and rounds them all up and is like, come on guys, let's go. Jason obviously has to tell Hypsipyle that he's leaving and Hypsipyle, according to Apollonius, does not handle this well, okay? She is like crying, she's grabbing his hands. She's like, please don't leave me. Remember to come back for me. And Jason's obviously like, yeah, sure, that's fine. But like, I'm kind of busy, so like, bye. And he just like leaves. Right now there's a detail in here that is only harped on at the end of the myth that is told in Apollonius, but it's harped on constantly in the Heroides. And that is that Jason had obviously obviously impregnated Hypsipyle. So now she is stuck with the future children of her and this dummy, Jason, which I cannot imagine the stress. Now this is where Apollonius leaves the myth, okay? But there's a little section in the middle before Ovid picks it up that uh, Hypsipyle actually births both of her children. So they are twins. One is called Thoas after her father and one is called Eum... Oh, Eumaeus? I always want to say Eumaeus, but it is Eumaeus. That is his name. I always want to say Eumaeus because there's a character in the Odyssey called Eumaeus. These names are far too similar. But either way, so those are her twin boys. And then after this is when Ovid picks it up. Now, basically, if you don't know what the Herodes are, I don't think I've explained it in a bunch of other videos, but the Herodes are a number of letters from mythological women to these men who like got up and left, right? So there's one from like Penelope to Odysseus. There's one from Hypsipyle to Jason, right? There are lots of different letters and they are all quite comical, I won't lie to you. I know they're supposed to be like really painful, but when you actually read what they're trying to say, or like what Ovid wants them to say, they are very funny, I must admit. The Hypsipyle one is a little bit sad, but the Hypsipyle note does tell us what happened in the aftermath sort of after Jason has left, because Hypsipyle is now at a point where she knows that Jason has completed his quest. This is the time when she's writing it. She's like, hey, I know that you completed your quest. I know you didn't come back here. And I heard that you were now with this new woman called Medea, excuse me? It's well funny, she's well pissed. And in fact, she opens it being like, you know what, you could have at least sent me a letter to just like, let me know because I have your children, right? Remember them. But instead I had to hear from in rumor, like, um, thank you for nothing. What we also find out from Ovid's version of Hypsipyle is that actually Jason and his men stayed on the island for like two years. So they literally dated for two years. Then he f***ed off, went to go hook up with Medea, brought her back to Greece, and now Hypsipyle is hearing all about this being like, I don't even know what to say to you. In fact, she's so mad that she ends up cursing Medea because she's like this over here that stole my man, which I'm like not about that, okay? And you guys know I'm not about men pitting women against each other because I just don't see the point of it. And if we wanted to write a real letter from Hypsipyle, she would probably just be mad at Jason and not like curse Medea. But by cursing Medea, she does kind of curse Jason because what she says in the curse to Medea is that she's like, I hope you end up losing Jason and you end up losing your two children, which if you know anything about the myth of Medea, you know that she kills her two children and that Jason divorces her. So like, I guess, I guess it all comes full circle. But that is Hypsipyle. That is really everything that we know about the mythology in regards to how we don't actually know how she dies. It might've been in the Euripides play. I actually have no idea. Um, but the end part of her story isn't actually given to us. So you know what? We need a modern retelling of Hypsipyle. That would be a sick book. Actually, if there's an author who's watching this who wants to write that, please holler at me. I will give you all of these sources. I will like quote for you. I will send them all to you. We need someone to pick up Hypsipyle and write us a modern feminist retelling of this bad queen. So yeah, thank you guys so much for the recommendation of Hypsipyle. If you guys have any more women that you want me to be discussing, please leave them in the comments below and I will obviously uh, try to deliver all the videos that you guys want me to. I'm trying my best and I know that there are a bunch of different videos that you guys are requesting, so slowly, slowly, those are gonna start coming out. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and we will be seeing you next time with more. Oh, I was gonna say more women, but I think next week is a book review. <laughs> Not 100%. Either way, we're gonna be seeing you with more videos here on Moaning. So we'll see you then.